Hello, and welcome to Rotlast Gaming. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a sliding door that goes up and down. Uh, good for the first person template or third person game if you're using that. Um, I will point out one difference in the blueprint if you're using the third person template, because I'm using the first person. Um, so let me show you exactly what we're going to be doing. I made this massive door frame, and the door inside, when you approach it, it slides up nice and smoothly. And when you leave the area, it slides back down behind you. Um, this will also be triggerable while you enter and exit the collision area, so it won't play all the way through. Very cool. All right, so let's get started. We're going to need to make a new blueprint class, and it's going to be an actor class. And you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it door slide up. Because um, you might have several different door types in your project. So it's good to be specific uh, if it's a, one that slides up and down or slides left and right or it's a swing hinged door. Um, so always be as specific as possible. Uh, let me bring this blueprint down here. All right. So first things first, we need a frame. So we're just going to go ahead to our components and we are going to add a cylinder. You don't need to make yours exactly like mine. The scale is going to be... Uh, two on the X, two on the Y, oops, two on the Y, and our Z is going to be 7.5. All right, so yeah, it might look huge, but that's actually the size in the scene, the one that's in the scene. Uh, if we go to a front view, we're going to have to set the location, which is going to be 305 on the X. And we're going to leave it on the Z at zero, or on the Y, sorry. And Z is going to be 375. So that moves it right up to the red line there. So when you drag it into your scene, it'll be perfectly level to the floor. All right, now we're going to need to, let's name this one. This is going to be frame right. And we're going to duplicate that. And this one's going to be frame left. All right, now the only difference between these is we're going to change the X location of frame left to be a negative value. So we want the negative 305. And now it's perfectly symmetrical, which is good for your door. You don't want your door to be offset. That would be a real pain in the butt to try and get in your scene properly. All right, we're going to need one more piece to the frame. You can make it whatever shape you'd like. I'm going to go with a cube. And we're going to call this frame top. And essentially, we're just going to change this location to 00640 on the Z. Because we just want it to move straight up. Oops, what's going on there? 640. There we go. And then the scale on the X is going to go to 6.5. And the Y and Z are going to both be a value of 2. And 2. Cool. Now, if we go to the perspective mode again, we can see it's pretty good. Oh, it's a little wide. Interesting. Maybe squeeze it up a little bit. So like a 1.8 on your Y might be good. That way you have no overlap over there. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm sure, you know, if you have a 3D model of your own or an artist doing the models for you, you don't even need a frame. All right. One last thing we need, I'm going to save that there, is we're going to need one more cube, and this is going to actually be our door. So we go to a front view. This one I don't have scaled out perfectly. We can just go to our scale tool and literally just make it fit. It needs to overlap at the top a bit. Um, if you're a perfectionist and you want it to line up at the bottom, um, you might have to change your scale to a, or your, your grid snap to a one, at which point you would then just kind of Make that line up perfectly. There you go. Just make sure there's an overlap at the top here, unless you want an opening at the top of your door. Um, that's up to you. All right, cool. So that's it for our building. Um, you can rename this cube to a door. That way we know it's the actual door. Um, now we just need one more thing, which is a collision component. So uh, I know most people use a box collision for a door. I personally prefer a sphere. And the reason I prefer the sphere is because it... 
if I can get my scale tool, it allows for the distance between you and the door to be even all the way around on like a box. So if we looked at this from a top view, what I mean is no matter where you are when you hit this collision, you're at an even distance to the door. That way it always looks like the door opens on uh, one set distance. It just, it looks nicer, it works nicer. Unlike if you use a box, um, what I don't like about it is you have these corners that protrude out much further. Um, so if you were to make your box like this, is like you can open the door from being over here or over here, but in front of it, you know, if this was a sphere, it would be really like probably way out here, is it should open from here, but the distance is so much closer now. Um, I just, I don't like that. I think it, it looks weird. It plays a little weird. Um, so I, I go with the sphere. Uh, we're going to call that our door collision. Cool. All right. Compile and save. And that is it for this, unless you want to change the material so you can see it move. Oops. Let me do like a like ceramic tile checker. There you go. So now when you walk up to it, instead of it just being a flat white surface moving, you wouldn't be able to tell it's moving. Now it actually has a pattern with some details, so you'll see it actually sliding up and down. All right, we're gonna need, we're gonna go into our construction script and we're gonna need two variables here. Um, the first is going to be called door down. This is gonna be a vector value. And then we can duplicate this and this is going to be door up, also a vector value. Very easy, very easy. All right, so door down, we're gonna drag out into our construction script and we're gonna set it. Plug that right in. Then we're gonna grab our door object, our component rather, and we're going to get world location. We're gonna drop that right into our door down variable. Now we're gonna drag in our door up. We're gonna set that. We can connect those two, but leave space. Because what we're going to do is we're going to break this down value. Then we're going to make a vector. And we want the X and the Y to be the same. So what we're doing is when a door is created in our game, it's getting the, the door component of the actor. It's getting the world location and setting that location into a, a variable. We want to save that variable because we want it to go back to the same spot every time the door closes. We don't want it to continually go through the floor. We want it to get to this spot and stop. Now we're breaking this variable and making a new one because the only thing, when the door goes up, we only want it to change one value, and that's the Z value, uh, which is our up and down. X is side to side, Y is forward and back, right? So if you wanted a door that slid to the side, you'd want to change either your X or Y. In this case, it would be our, our, uh, our X value. Um, but we only want to change the Z up and down. So we're going to do an add float. So float plus float, and that's going to go in the Z. So we're getting the current value of Z from door down. We want to add, I think my value is 500. So we want it to just uh, 500 units up. And then we're going to set that door up value. So that one's, that's it. That's pretty easy. We're setting our two values right when the object is constructed in the world. Why I like to use the construction script instead of um, putting it in the event begin play is this makes it nice and easy to set up for uh, randomly generated or procedurally generated maps um, or people using like dungeon crawlers or roguelikes. Um, using a construction script where you have a building that can be procedurally placed. If you're using a, this door on a building or somewhere in a procedural level, um, you want it to be in a construction script so these values aren't all the same or so that they get set when the um, the actor is spawned into the world, not only when the um, the game begins to play. So that's that's the biggest difference. If you have a, a set map already built that's going to be static, um, then fine, you can put it in the event graph. Um, but it, it's just not a bad practice to use construction script. All right, so we can delete everything in the event graph. We're not gonna be using anything that they set us up with. We're gonna to go to our door collision component and we're gonna scroll all the way down. At the bottom here, we have a bunch of events that we can use specific to the object that we're highlighted on. We're gonna need two of these. We're gonna need on component begin overlap. So you can hit this plus sign and we're gonna go back to our door collision. 
And then we need on component end overlap, which is right underneath the begin overlap. Cool. That's all we're going to need there. Now we're going to work with the on begin overlap first. Let's drag off other actor and we're going to go cast to, oops, cast to, and I am using the first person template. So I'm going to go first person character. Now what this is doing, this is essentially doing a check. This is a fast way to do a check is um, if the other actor is equal to this value. So if it is the first person character, then it will proceed to whatever we connect after this. If it's not the first person character, then this string will never work. Um, so if you're using the third person uh, template, you're going to want to cast to third person character. Um, so that's really the only difference with this. Uh, and at the bottom, we can actually control W with this highlighted and just duplicate this. Um, this isn't necessary, but I feel like it could cause issues if you don't have it. I'm not really sure. I didn't test it, but there's no reason not to put this here. Um, on component end overlap is we only want it to end the overlap when this character leaves. Um, so if something else is inside the overlap, um, we don't want it to affect it at all. So that, that's all. That's the only reason I'm putting that there. I don't even know if it would, um, if anything else would affect it. All right, next. Uh, we need a timeline. We're going to use a timeline to make our door move. Um, so when you type in timeline, it doesn't actually highlight the timeline we want, which is kind of annoying because it's usually the only one you ever use. Um, it's at the bottom here called add timeline. Uh, we can call this door move. So the begin overlap is going to go into play. The end overlap is going to go into reverse. Now, if you do a play from start or reverse from end, um, the difference is when it plays, as long as you overlap, so as long as you're overlapping it, it's going to play it from whatever frame it's on. So if the door is only halfway up, like let's say it was coming down and you went back in, it's going to just continue playing it from where it is right now. As where if you do a play from start, it's going to start the animation all over again. So if the door is closing and you overlap it again, it's going to go back to frame one, meaning that your door is going to be going to jump like all the way down to being closed and it's going to start playing the animation over again. We don't want that. That's a really, um, really bad way to do it. Um, cause then you have to sit there and wait for the animation and plus it jumps. So it's, it's just not the proper way of doing it. And that's all we're going to need from there. Next is we need to set our world location, set world location. And we want this to be the door itself. So you'll see this here. It'll list all your components. Awesome. Now we're going to drag off the vector value here in our set world location. We're going to turn this into a V interp, a vector interp two. And essentially what an interp is, is um, it's short for interpolation, which means um, kind of blend between them, go from one point to another to, um, so that's basically it. We're, we're getting two vector values and we're telling it to go from one to the other. All right. And now we're going to grab our door down value or variable. We're just going to get it. We've already set it. And that's door down is the current. That's our static location. If you look in here, it is down. That's where it starts. And our door up, we're going to get that. And we're going to put that into the target. So that's where we want it to move to. Now we're missing one thing with the timeline. So let's double click on the timeline and it's going to open its own panel here. And we want to add a float track. So the first one with the F plus here, there, and it gives you this red line. We need two keys. So you're going to right click on this red line in the middle, add key, and then add another one somewhere separate to it. And let's select the first one. And this is going to be a zero, zero value. So it's going to start all the way at the beginning, zero, zero. And then our second one, we are going to put at a time of two seconds with a value of one. And we want to change this length now up top here. The length is uh, how long this is going to play. We want this to be two seconds. So that's from start to finish is two seconds. Then we can use these arrows to get our whole line in here. Now you see it's a whole, it's a very straight line, meaning that it's moving at a constant speed from start to finish. 
Um, this is good for some instances, depending on what you want to move. But for a door or things that are moving, we typically have uh, an ease in and ease out, meaning that it starts off slow and it gets faster. And then when it's coming to an end, it slows down and then stops. Um, this makes for a much smoother transition and it looks nicer um, and it's more realistic. So they have this function built in. If you right click on it, just go to auto and you'll see that it adds this nice slope here, this nice curve. This is our ease in. It's slowly getting to its top speed, which is right here in the middle. This is the, the steepest incline. And then it's easing out and slowing down at the end. That's a nice smooth transition. It's going to be a much better animation. All right. Now that we made that track, this was a float track, if you remember, it adds this node to our door move timeline, this uh, float track. This is going to go into our delta time. And so this is just going to say over the two seconds, so this is our delta time is two seconds. Over those two seconds, it's going to move, it's going to interpolate these two vectors to, to set a new world location on our door. So we compile, we can save that. And if I'm not mistaken, that should be everything. So if we go into our map, and let me delete the door I made before, and we'll drag in our new one. So door slide up. We'll drag that in there. Cool. Save. Let's play. Now, if I overlap this, oh no. What did we do? What did I do? I missed something. Hold on. Um, I believe. Oh, interp speed. We need to change this to a value of one. So. It was a value of zero, meaning that it was instantaneously um, interpolating between these two. We want it to be a value of one, meaning that it, it is um, going to follow this timeline animation one second per one second. All right, so that should fix our issue. Save that. We'll go and there we go. It slides up. You see it eases in and eases out very nicely. Slow to fast to slow. Awesome. It's a very nice door. It's a very easy door to make. And it just it looks good. It's easy to place. And it's good for procedural generation or whatever you want to do with it. So hope you learned something. Uh, subscribe and like if you want to continue to see more of these videos. And uh, hope to see you in the next one.